All right, Mike here on Guns, Cars, and Digits. So what I've got here is flat plane cranks. Um, and this is for V8s in this case. Um, so a flat plane crank, you have, so you have the center of the crank where that it's rotating along, and then you have your journals. Some point up, some point 180 degrees in the opposite direction. And so there are two ways to make a balanced flat plane crank and you end up with uh, the one three two four crank which means one and three are uppers two and four are downers and the other one is the standard way the way it's been done forever is the one and four two and three and the reason you don't have the two up two down setup is because they change the center of gravity of the engine when it's running so, these pistons and rods point up, and these point down. They're real close to the pivot. And these have that same combination of up and down pointed in the opposite direction. So, instead of the engine wanting to rock backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and vibrating the heck out of the car, it, uh, it doesn't. And the reason that this method is possible is because if this one wants to rock forwards, therefore this side wants to rock that way. And this one is trying to rock in the opposite direction. So these are both effectively balanced. Uh, you don't need to make uh, a huge counterweight inside. And then we have our, our possible firing orders. Okay, So this is the journal number you have. The red numbers are GM numbers because, let's face it, some of us are Chevy guys and the rest of us are stupid. Uh, and then we have the blue numbers here uh, that are Ford and Europe numbers. So, for the GT350 style crank, you get this firing order. It's 15483726. And you can see it from its available firing orders. One five four eight three seven two six. The standard flat plane cranks for V8s is one five three seven four eight two six. Um, and then you can choose stuff too. It doesn't have to be this way. You could do one eight two six uh, four five three seven. And all that's going to change, or I don't want to say all that's going to change, but that what is going to change is the helper cylinders here. And that's what these diagrams are important for. Remember how I said in the other video about cross-plane V8s that some engines, or some cylinders will be at top dead center and some will be at bottom dead center? Some of them will be firing, some will be compressing, some will be exhausting, and some will be uh, compressing. And I think I said intake, I'm not sure. Uh, getting hungry. But the, the pattern is, if you leave the valve open after bottom dead center, then slow air can be pushed back out of this cylinder, and another one that wants the air can have it. So you have one helps four, four helps three, three helps two, two helps one. And if you go to a different resonance, because the tubes that the engine, that each cylinder breathes out of, because those vibrate at a certain frequency, if you want latent vibration, see not everything vibrates one right on top of the other. Sometimes because they're far apart and because they're different lengths, they will vibrate slowly when they come in and out of the air slew. Air slew is a different video, by the way. When you have a cylinder vibrating out of air slew, one will no longer be helped by two. It will be helped by the one that's just running slow. So one will be helped by number seven. So if one here is helped by potentially combinations of two and seven, uh, these are adjacent, and this one is whatever distance that is. You can measure that when you make your engine. When you compare that to the standard flat plane, one is helped by two and by eight. 
So the distance it has to go is bigger. Uh, we'll try a different cylinder. C uh, cylinder number seven is helped by five and by one. So seven here is helped by five and by one. These are closer. Seven over here is helped by eight and by four. So seven is helped by eight and four. These are closer together. So they're able to change the frequency response with this firing order. And they're able to do things that they couldn't do with this one. We'll try another cylinder. We'll try number eight. Eight is helped by seven and three. So this has real close ones too. And in this one, eight is helped by five and by one. Eight, five, and one. So these are real far apart. They're all on the same side too. So don't consider the, the difference in these crankshaft journals to be a big thing. Your biggest power loss on any engine is going to be your compression ratio. You need high compression. If you don't know how to get high compression, you're incompetent. Uh, you're not a very good engineer, get out of the hobby, or accept the fact that you're going to waste fuel and start thinking of ways to make your combination run more efficiently. And I have that coming up in my next video. It's going to be on air slew and uh, camshaft duration. But thanks for watching. Um, oh, one more little thing here. You can see what types of cranks you have. If you look at what's 360 degrees out, it shows you what kind of crank you have. So if you have 180 degrees uh, between 1 and 3, that means you have... 360 degrees between 1 and, whoa, I lost myself, 2. So you just have to skip a cylinder to see what kind of crank you have. In this case, you have 1 and 4, 3 and 2 for the standard flat plane. 3 and 2. For these styles, you have one and three, four and two. Cool, huh? All right. Happy peak oil, everybody.